Hi guys, it's the ghost. So I'm here in Switzerland, um, but I wanted to take at least just a few minutes um, out of what I'm doing to answer some of the questions that you guys gave me when I welcomed us all into the new year, 2019. Um, and so there were some good questions that came in. So I'm just going to take a few minutes, like I said, and answer some of them. Um, I'm not sure if I can pronounce all these names correctly, but my first one that I thought I would talk about is from Samazia Skipperable. Uh, and she said, here it is here. And she says, uh, did you have to stay the entire six months? Were you given your bag back when you boarded the jet? Did Phoenix say if they procreated similar to man? Any mention of the hybrids? And of course, I can ask more. So um, I can't get to all of these, but uh, let me answer a couple of those. Yes, I did stay the entire six months on that job. And yes, my bag was always with me. You'll be happy to know. Uh, I just didn't really talk about that. But with the six months, um, although I stayed there for the duration of that job, it doesn't mean other things weren't going on. You know, I had a special office space set up for me and my team was actually there for part of the time too because there were still other jobs that I wanted and needed to do. So yes, I did stay. It was the kind of job that I wanted to stay close to. So I wanted to be there. I mean, the opportunity with Phoenix was just too amazing not to. If this had been a different situation, you know, say it was something I was setting up for a company somewhere, like that kind of situation, then it would have been different. But with this job, there was too much going on, too many things to see and learn. So I was definitely not going to leave. And honestly, I don't think that anyone, if they were on this job, would have wanted to leave. It was crazy. It was incredible. And it was just definitely something. But okay, let's go on to this next one here from someone I see often, Solar Function. It says, hi there, Miss Ghost. I want you to do a video on answering what may be the cause of the Mandela effect. Why do a good percentage of people remember living on the other Earth on the outside of the Milky Way galaxy, but now we are like 750,000 light years opposite that to Earth? Okay, now this, this question stood out to me because of the job I'm on right now, actually. Because you're saying, you know, right, that how can a good percentage of people have the same memories? And that's what the Mandela effect would do. And because I'm involved in everything that's going on right now with Chloe on this job, I would say that we would need to be open to the idea that we as humans have vulnerabilities when it comes to the energy that hits our world from somewhere else. You know, we count on things to be the same. We count on the sun coming up every day. We count on the air that we breathe day and night. We would never expect it to be different. Yet at the same time, the majority of people believe that we are part of a major universe, a galaxy, that we claim to know very little about. I mean, nature, if you will, is more powerful than anything we humans could do. We try to think of things, invent things, but really, we're in a constant mode of reaction to the world around us. And like I'm learning with Chloe's research, we have to be open to the idea that there are things going on that we cannot control. We can't control how our dimension or universe lives and breathes, and so if we take your scenario then, unless we would know the source of where this energy could be coming from exactly, it would almost be impossible to ever figure out how any of it got into our dimension in the first place. The Mandela effect is around us in many different ways, and I think that we will be working for a very long time in trying to figure this out. And I think that Chloe might be onto something. I'm actually learning a lot on this job at CERN. So anyway, I hope that at least tries to answer your question. I don't think there is one solid and for sure answer on what causes the many Medela effects that seem to be out there. So, okay. Well, let's move on to another one here from, here we go, Lovely Swan. It says, hi, Ghost. Hope you're having an awesome and exciting new year so far. And there were five questions here, but I'm going to get into one of these because it seems to be a constant, which is this one here that I have up. Am I ever fearful of my well-being? And to that, I can say no, specifically to the way that you are asking the question. There are corrupt agencies out there, for sure. We all know this and actually just come to expect it these days. And yes, I will work with them. But don't forget, I get the job done. 
And I'm saying that because what that does is it makes me a possibility to a lot of different people. You know, what one person or group wants one day, say the others do not. Well, at any given moment, that could flip. So even if they don't all love me at once or love what I'm doing, I should say, they either have used me or they know they might need to use me or want to use me in the future. So someone who hates what I'm doing sometimes may already be thinking of getting a hold of me for something they need. See what I mean? It's a love-hate kind of thing. And me talking here, I know people ask about that, but believe me, with some of the stuff that these people are dealing with, you know, in their real lives, you know, do you really think a YouTube channel is going to jeopardize anything that they're doing? They're big things. They can do things that can jeopardize and get in the way of each other. But us here, completely insignificant to them. Like I always say, they love the non-believers. They count on it. So it actually provides me a buffer too. So to your question in the way you're asking it specifically, no, I do not worry about my well-being with the stuff that I am doing or saying. Okay, let's get on to, here we go, Debbie Cock. I want to see part two of the Pope wanting to go into the dimension where he rules, or has he? And it's this one. Hi, Debbie. Well, that's the plan, right? And I'm here now and have another trip to the other side planned, and I will give you an update when I get back. I mean, this thing is unfolding for me, too, at the same time I'm telling you. This new CERN job is anything but cut and dried or clear, and there are a lot of questions and unknowns, but we will get there, and I'll share what I know with you in the On the Job vlogs. So you'll just have to remember that instead of me taking an entire job and summing it into 20 or 30 minutes or even maybe 40 minutes where you get the beginning and the middle and the end, you're getting it along the way. So as soon as I find out exactly what's going on with the Pope, I will let you know because I'm interested in finding out too. And I'm hoping on my next trip, I get a lot more information because we're still in sort of this information gathering phase, but I have a feeling things are going to start happening real quick. Okay. Here is one from Sarah Madden. Ghost, are you Jennifer Marshall from the TV show Roswell Mysteries Decoded? The voice is different, but the way you two speak is the same. Hey, Sarah. Well, that's a no. I'm not Jennifer Marshall. I know she has that Roswell show, and we're going to have my Roswell information coming out too soon. But no, I'm not her. And I thought I'd just go ahead and answer this one because, you know, there could be a lot of you out there that think that. So I just thought I'd get it out there that no, I'm not Jennifer Marshall. Okay, we have here Scott Phillips. Has any of your work involved anything to do with or connected to the inner earth or black sun? Hey, Scott, great question. And I can say yes to that. The black sun and the idea of an inner earth means different things to different people. If you're familiar with this stuff, which it seems like you are because you're asking, you know that it's really hard to pinpoint the real and true meaning of it all. How do you know what's right? How do you know what someone's saying is right? Who's right? All of that stuff. What I can do uh, somewhere down the line here is post a story uh, about one of the times that my job did touch on this, and that might give you some or maybe a new perspective on it all. Okay, the next one here, super spicy memes. And all right, hey, my number one fan, how are you doing? Now, there were a lot of questions here, and I can't get to all of them because if I answered all of these questions, I honestly probably wouldn't be able to get to anybody else because I am limited on my time right now because I'm on the job. But I'm going to get to what I can. And so since I'm working with CERN as I speak, your questions, a couple of them reminded me of a job I did also with CERN, and it's titled... The vlog is uh, in the YouTube channel, and it's titled CERN Scientist Travels to Other Dimension to Undo Mandela Effect That Could Wipe Out the Human Race. So if you haven't listened to that, head over there and take a listen. In that job, those in charge, you know, all the important people in our world, made a choice so that they could get more. And that's how it all started, plain and simple. And they thought they had a great idea. We have robots and things, even now, to help the people. But when they tried to use them just so that they could get more for themselves, it overtook everything, and it really flipped on them, and good. And now I'm talking about the world, not just in America. It was a mess. 
what they were doing was just evil to the humans, and it turned out disastrous, even if they couldn't really see it all unfolding in front of their eyes at that time. That job was our world in the future, and it actually was one of the more uncomfortable scenarios that I've ever seen. I mean, I would not want that to happen here. The people in power seem to always want more, at least the ones who really do not care about the rest of us. In that future world, there was greed and evil intent with zero regard for the regular people, and it was blowing up in their face. And then, because you also mentioned Mandela Effect, that job also does give an explanation to one instance of a Mandela Effect that exists. So check that out if you haven't. And shout out to you, super spicy memes. Okay, the next one here is from Park Falls, who says, isn't talking about this top secret info meddling? And how come it seems that you never have to sign a gag order when everyone in such places and, and have had to? Hell, I had to, and nothing about my job is top secret. Makes you think. Hi, Park Falls. Okay, I have a two-part answer to what you're saying here. First of all, what I mean by meddling is that even if I have, say, concerns about something that went on in a job I did, and that's after I am done with what I was sent in to do, what I mean by meddling is it's not my place anymore to give my opinion or try to continue any work on anything because of my own personal interest. You know, when a job is done, it's done. Even if I feel like it's going in some odd direction, or I'm thinking about something where it won't work, or any sort of personal opinion I have about it, it's not my place to go back. It's handed back to them. And then that all brings me to the second part of my answer for you. When you're asking if talking about top secret information is meddling, the answer is no it really wouldn't fall into that category. And why I would never have to sign a gag order is simple. Why would you need someone to sign a gag order and leave any paper trail at all if it's something you don't expect anyone to believe in the first place, if it's something that you're going to deny? It's like the answer I gave earlier. They count on the non-believers. They don't need a gag order. The non-believers are their protection. You have to remember that this stuff is levels and levels above and beyond anything that we would see in what you'd call normal life, as is so much of what goes on on the dark web. People don't worry about stuff like that because people don't want to think about it. They avoid thinking about it if they do hear it, and they will resist believing it. So a gag order, that's just an unnecessary agreement that could maybe someday get out, proving there was something to hide in the first place. So... It's unwanted and it's unnecessary. So I hope that answers your question because it's a real question. It's a good one. I'm sure a lot of people wonder that. I get asked it a lot actually, but it's okay because I like having the chance to explain it. So thanks for the question. All right, the next one here is from AMOTDC. Hello. Your question is, how did you go about finding your line of work? And I thought this would be a good one to end on for today. Okay, well, if you listen to my vlog on the coma patient, that sort of tells you how my work began to segue into what it is. I went from the CIA to working on my own, and there was nothing in between. I just slid right into it. You know, out in the field, doing the different things I was doing, I found that there are so many people that need help or have the money to pay for that extremely unusual job. And the move into this type of work was a great fit for me. You know, there's always things people need. And if you want to be successful and you enjoy a certain type of work, you just need to fill a need of those looking for something that you're interested in. For me, it was filling my need for that crazy adrenaline rush and their need for all the crazy stuff that they want. I saw a lot at the CIA. So, you know, I was thinking, why not take this a level further and see what's really out there? There's a lot of stuff that you're just not going to see or ever know when you're doing the mainstream stuff. Fulfilling as that life might be, it's just a fact. And it should be that way. Or really, the whole planet would walk around freaked out all of the time, and then they'd be unable to maintain their lives at all. And in my case, we have a world full of people that desperately need things. You know, like they generally have a need for certain things that they don't know how to get. And then you have the people that just desperately want certain things. They have to have it, no matter how weird it is. 
And of course, you have those that are just beyond greedy and they just want to have more. So, hey, why not? And my grandmother always said that I was meant for a big life. And, you know, if someone put me behind a desk for eight hours a day, I can tell you that that would not have been it. And the CIA was great, but I think I have found what I'm meant to do. Although it's hard, I really can't imagine doing anything else right now. So I hope that answers your question. And okay, well, I have a lot to do. I'm planning for my next trip over to the other side. But I love the questions. I really do like to interact with you guys. I've just been so busy that it's sometimes hard to get to some of the stuff that I want to get to. But anyway, thanks for all the questions that you guys put in. I really appreciate all of them. And I'm going to get back to work. And the next time that you hear from me will probably be my next on-the-job vlog of what happens when I take my next trip. So thanks again for listening, and I will talk to you guys soon.